Fear can only exist in the past. It can only exist in what you know. There's no fear in the future. Welcome to Unlock Meaning, where we explore the strategies and tools that help you unlock meaning in every season of life. Today's guest, Jacqueline Villon, immigrated to America just eight years old with her family following a call from the Lord. A woman of many talents and interests, she has grown up tasting God's goodness through his faithfulness in all areas of life. JJ returned to her home country, South Africa, for college and has navigated a life between both countries since then. After 20 successful years in corporate business and finance, something extraordinary happened. She retired. Now embracing many passions as a motivational speaker, musician, minister and life coach, through obedience and diligence, JJ inspires others to live their best lives. It's my pleasure to welcome JJ Villon. Hey JJ, thank you for, so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am well and thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm excited. So excited to have a conversation and I love that we can do it now across the oceans and still have a live real conversation. So I'm doing real good. It's a great introduction because um, you mentioned across the ocean, that's today's um, technology, it's amazing. And I know that you are a world traveler, so what places are still on your bucket list? <laughs> oh my goodness, what places aren't on my bucket list? Um, I think probably one of my top places to go to, I'd love to go to Indonesia. Um, and really like the whole Australasia side, I want to get there. And then this is my goal for actually this upcoming year, 2023, is to get to Namibia, which is right my neighboring country in South Africa. And I haven't been yet. So that's on my top of the list to get to. Well, that's exciting. Exciting. A lot of countries to discover. Um, JJ, take us back a bit and tell us how you got into corporate finance and business and just take us into the, your story and your journey, how this happened. Yeah. So I actually defaulted into finance. Funny story. When I was actually in school, I was terrible at math. <laughs> I didn't do well in classes. I even had to get a tutor to come help me get through math. So it wasn't my strong point. So everyone laughs at me now to think, how did JJ of all people end up in finance or in banking? I studied business management and entrepreneurship with not really much insight of what I wanted to do. I just knew I was a visionary and a dreamer. So when I came to the States, I actually just landed a job um, as a part-time teller in one of the banks and was just favored by the Lord, honestly, through my whole journey and promoted very quickly. One door led to another. Um, my degree helped me behind that, but really it was just the work ethic and fell in love with the job in the corporate sense of coaching people and leading and got into management and grew that way. So that was really how finance and banking and that whole corporate side of my career just ended up. And 20 years later, um, found myself right in the hustle and bustle of the rat race that we call in America, working the industry, um, but really learned and gained a lot from it that I use a lot now in my business ventures and what I do. So I'm grateful for the season I worked there, but I'm also very grateful that I was able to step out of it and find something new and retire from that side of life. Looking back to oh, on these 20 years of corporate um, experience, how did you unlock meaning during that period? Um, I think just, I mean, really having a relationship with the Lord and understanding that he's continually speaking and he's leading and he's guiding and being sensitive to that. One of the biggest things with my career and my journey is I felt God say in the very beginning that as long as favor is following you, I'm with you. When the favor dries up, it's time to move. So 
after really a decade here in the States working in finance, I felt that that time was coming and a new favor had kind of just lifted. The seasons were changing. It was such an interesting journey because I learned that how we can so quickly become dependent on the structure, the world structure or the economic structure, that paycheck that's coming or the benefits that come with it. And so even though I heard the direction of Holy Spirit saying, shift, let's realign, I struggled to let go. And it was that that transition of coming out of maybe what had become comfortable. So instead of being an obedient season, a change to a place of comfort that I struggled to let go and step out in faith. So I probably spent about two years really wrestling with the whole stepping out and being ready to launch into that uncomfortable place and say, hey, God, if there's a new season, I'm ready to take it on, whatever whatever that looks like, and leave all these things that have fed my need for so long, um, leave them behind. So after two years of just battling back and forth, it was really understanding that to take the leap of faith, it's just a decision and some discipline to say yes to what I already knew the call was to come out of that. So a lot of that journey, the meaning behind it for me was that can we continue to be in the place of obedience, even though we can so easily become set back with our comforts and our needs and our desires and to say, can I put that on the side and still be led because that's where the favor is. Mm. And well, being obedient is one thing. Um, it's a, a very important part uh, um, in our um, life with Christ. When we are following Christ, obedience is the love language, I'd say. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes, uh, sometimes I struggle a bit because I don't know how it, this is for you, um, JJ. Obedience sometimes is for me a head thing. It's just something I understand and I do it. And I'm wondering, how did you feel actually in this process of letting go and leaving your comfort zone and just say no to 20 years of successful, actually, uh, work life, a successful career? Um, scared. I felt scared. Um, so I've been skydiving. I've gone skydiving three times now. Um, And I remember the first time I went, the guy who was my tandem person that takes you up, he said something to me when we were getting all our gear on or whatever, and the anxiousness was growing and I was nervous and didn't know what to expect. And it was my first time and all these emotions rushing through me. And he says, when you get up there, you'll see why the birds sing. And that stuck Mm -hmm. with me. And I have, I'm in the process of writing a book at the moment. And one of the chapters I deal with is fear. And I use my skydiving as an example, because when I went skydiving, I realized if you've ever gone, you'll probably relate to this. If you haven't, I think everyone should try to experience it. But going up in the plane, ascending your 15 to 18,000 feet into the air, that anticipation of what's to come, there's so much anxiety in, I don't want to say that in a negative way, but that starts to grow in you where really fear can be found. And then even to the point of you get, you're up 18,000 feet now, they roll up the side of the doors, they're scooting you forward on the benches, (laughs) and then they put you on the edge to jump out. And actually when they do that, they say on the count of three, we're going to go, but they actually don't go on the count of three. So hint out there they they go before that but because if because so many people at that very last minute they panic and they try to grab on the sides or something so they don't want to take that risk so they do like one two and then they actually go on two and i remember being oh wow that's crazy (laughs) yeah so you it's it's unexpected and all of a sudden but um i remember all the feelings leading up to it and how scared i was to jump out of the plane And the very moment that I left the plane and there was no more ability to hold on to what I've known, all fear left. And it was this, Hmm. I'm now in the most dangerous part of the whole experience. I'm ascended 18,000 feet, free falling at, um, for about three to five seconds, you're just free falling. The wind's blowing against your face. 
the exhilaration that's happening. You don't know what's going to happen when you pull the cord. And But none of those thoughts existed in that place. It was just this amazing, like, it's, it was just so amazing how fear immediately left me. And so when I write about it in my book, I talk about how fear can only exist in the past. It can only exist in what you know. There's no fear in the future. So that whole idea of we're afraid of the unknown, it's not so much that we're afraid of the unknown, it's the fact that we're afraid of letting go of what we do know. Mm -hmm. And so as long mm -hmm. as I had the ability to hold on, fear gripped me. But as soon as that option left, I didn't have that ability to hold on to anything, fear didn't exist. Like almost supernaturally, if I could say that in a skydiving experience. And so the same happened with my job when I was anticipating the changeover, that two years that I talk about. There was a lot of feelings that came with that and, and the anxiety and the fear of, I don't want to leave what I'm so comfortable with what and what's that going to look like? How am I going to support myself? What is God going to say next? I don't even know what that looks like, but right now I know how to support myself. I've got bills to pay and people to impress or whatever your thing is. But as soon as I finally just took that step and stepped out, it was like all fear left. And it was this an amazing, and ever since it has been this amazing ride of faith and trusting him and just knowing that it's going to be okay because I don't have any other choice. <laughs> like it's do or die in this <laughs> free fall. Like, here we go. So what was this pivotal moment then then that made you get rid of the fear is it is, was it the fact that you left or was it the mindset change or what was it exactly what was the thing that changed everything i think it was me making the decision i had to just put like so leaving a job i had to put pen to paper and write my resignation letter and i was very deliberate in my leaving and 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 the way i did it so i took some strategy and wisdom so it gave me more peace to to leave because I dedicated so much time and my reputation was one of good work ethic and loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, so I was also scared to leave that reputation behind, but it was making, it was just making the decision. You know, there's that quote that says, do it and do it scared. Like, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if you're afraid, do it anyways. And it's in the doing yeah. it that fear leaves. It's in the doing it that everything shifts and changes. So that's where obedience is, it really comes down to obedience is it's not mm -hmm. a mind thing. Obedience must be an action. It's an immediate, implicit act of obedience to what God is saying. That's why faith only operates in the now. So if you're going to yeah. be obedient, it has to be now. Yeah, that's that's so good. And um, I can totally relate to that. It's it's difficult to, to make the decision. But once you burn your ships... Then you're over that. Well, obviously, fear in my life, fear hasn't gone away right away, but it's done. I'm I'm flying down. Um, the, the earth is coming the, um, closer, falling down. But that's actually where the thrill happens, doesn't it? Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. And most people don't ever get to experience that because they never leave the comfort zone. Yep, yep. But I mean, you've traveled. And, yeah, you've traveled all over, and you said something, and I love it. Like when you burn the ships. But what oh, have yeah. you felt like in your life was the ships that you had to burn? Well, I I burned several ships in my life and it was every time extremely scary. It was um, many years ago while, while working in the corporate world, I had this crazy idea to um, pursue a PhD. Um, I have been working probably about 10 years already and this idea would just not go away. And I was not sure whether it was just me or whether it was a God thing. So I tried to find a suitable project and nothing happened. So it's like, okay, it's not meant to happen. I let go. And then God miraculously opened the door, like really amazing. The perfect project, the perfect place. And I was so well paid for a, being a PhD. It was just, just miracles after miracles. Mm. But for me, it was very scary to leave my comfort zone, to leave my salary, to leave uh, my position. Sure. And, and then later, um, three years ago, when I decided to leave the corporate world, we have a similar story, yeah. actually. 
I decided to leave the corporate world to move to Cambodia. This was so scary too. It was extremely scary because on the one hand, I love the adventure. I felt it was time to do something else. But on the other hand, I felt not qualified for the job. And I mm. felt much more qualified actually for what I was doing at that time. Because I had a successful career. I had a lot of influence, great opportunities, a great team. And it took me a while to come to that point where I say, okay, I let go of the science. Because I, had, I was afraid that I would not find um, this meaning, yeah, this meaning and significance in a, in a, in a completely different area of life. But, but um, it was the best decision as well to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for you and taking that, taking that leap. And I think it's, they talk about the one percenters in the world and it might be a little bit more than one percent, but it takes a certain, certain caliber of a person to take that, take that jump and to find what's on the other side. And like you said, it's the, then the thrill begins. Yeah, and it's still going on. It's it's been three years, and the thrill still there's still a lot of uncertainty. It's still an adventure, and um, but I'm still alive <laughs> <laughs> to tell the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it does work, and um, I'm curious, JJ, because um, you, I love what you said. Every dream begins with a dreamer, and. I think that's such a great statement, especially um, when it comes to leaving your comfort zone. What role does your, does your dream now play in this new season of your life? Um, well, my dad, my dad had a quote that said, dream so big that you can't sleep at night and can't wait to wake up in the morning. And most oh, wow. of us know the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors. And he was sold into slavery. Read the story of him moving from the pit to prison to the palace. And what I love so much about the movements in his story was that it wasn't built on any skill or luck. Joseph was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And he mm. dared to dream, no matter how scary it was, um, no matter what the costs might be, um, no matter what other people thought of him. I mean, even his brothers thought he was crazy because of his dreams. But Joseph dared to dream, and it was the very dream that made way for him. And oftentimes, the big ideas and innovative thoughts, the stretching and living beyond our comfort zones, seem too scary or impossible, so we ignore them. Um, but they are dreams and ideas and innovative thoughts that are just waiting for someone to become the dreamer and grab a hold of them. So when I wrote that quote, um, about every dream begins with the dreamer, it's it was a reminder to be the dreamer of dreams, that the creator of the impossible and to be the one who's not scared to take a chance, the believer. So for me, it's just continuing to dream is the place I live. And it's not being scared of let the dream be big because that's what's going to push you to the next level. And that's what's going to require faith. Like, let it be so big that I can't do it with my own hands. And that was mm -hmm. in, in the corporate field, I could accomplish what, whatever I was accomplishing because of the skill and the will that I brought to the table. Now I'm in a place like I'm dreaming things that require only, only God on my side is going to get me to the next level. And that's where I want to live in that place. I want to live where I'm completely dependent on saying, God, if you don't show up, this dream's too big for just me. And that's the place of fulfillment and meaning and significance mm. and purpose wow that's exciting that's so it's really amazing so how does this play in because you yeah you have you acquired a lot of um skills because this is the question i always was asking um to what extent does it make sense to pivot and to leave uh, my sweet spot let's say like that uh, and to do something completely different. I wonder whether you're leveraging your skill sets, your experiences in your new thing, or is it very different? How does this, how do you navigate actually your new, new season? Um, I think it's actually just not different. I think what we find hmm. in like the railway tracks of life, so there's my ministry and there's the corporate field, they shouldn't look different, especially a lot of people who are, 
vacillating between the two and kind of have a ministry line, but are working in the secular field and being able to use that as a platform. If you differentiate the two and you say, I've got my giftings over here that work in a ministerial capacity where I'm obedient, but then I've got my secular job here that I show up to every day and I just do my thing. If they don't correlate to giftings and become the same platform, then we're really missing the call. Mm -hmm. So really the same things. And the reason I received favor was because of the giftings that I carry, which are, are the skills, the leadership skills that I carry or being a dreamer or innovative or an entrepreneur carrying a moral ethics in the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and justice. Those are, those are things that worked so well for me in both levels of where I find myself either in career driven or in ministry. Um, so I think it's a lot of the same. And what I loved about my job was the whole coaching piece, um, especially in management mm -hmm. like that. I got to lead people and help develop them from where they were and take them to the next level or help them self-discover or identify certain talents and giftings that they had and bring that out of them. I do that exact same thing in my coaching today with life change. I see people and I'm calling out and inspiring that part of them that calls them to greatness. So I think it's very, sim very similar um, between hmm. the two and what I use today. And I always say also, if you want to know what your gifting is, then look in your hand. What, do, what are you carrying? What are you passionate about? What are you good at? David looked in his hand and he had a slingshot and that's what God used. And that's the very thing in his hand that brought him to the place of promotion and to kingship. Moses had a staff and it was the staff that led him out of captivity. And so sometimes it's just what we have in our hand. It's nothing special or something that falls on you or this gift that's given to you out of the blue. It's sometimes it's just what am I good at? And so for you even in, in what you do in the, your brain and the science and the edu like the way, the intelligence that you carry, that's the same gifting that works for you in ministry and in your relationships and in your travels and in mm. your season. And the same thing that causes you to succeed in the business world. Yeah, I love that. It's so true because um, it took me a while to understand that. I always felt that my ministry at church and my secular ministry or ministry or whatever calling were completely disconnected. Mm -hmm. And for way too long, I was living this life, you know, with the handbrake on, just going to work, not working too much because I wanted to have enough time for my ministry, you know, during the weekend or even during the week at church. But I realized that this was completely wrong. I, I completely realized that my calling was in the business world. Mm. Obviously, I love the church. I, uh, the church is the hope of the world. But I also realized that there is so much gifting around. And unfortunately, it cannot or it's not always um, well used at church. And it's probably also because we are called to go into the marketplace right. and to make a difference there. Mm. And uh, I realized that I, as a scientist, as an engineer, as a leader, I can go to places. To, actually, I can bring the gospel to places where the church can't go. Absolutely. And that's so powerful. Yeah, this is a game changer. And I think God calls us um, into places where, where no one else can go. And we can bring the gospel to that person that needs it, but would never go to a church or would not even listen to a podcast or would... No, but... Since we have a certain credibility, we can go and we can talk to that person. And especially, I mean, so, gosh, when I think of your field, I mean, it's almost with envy, but in a great way, like in science and engineering, <laughs> you think probably one of the biggest places that need to hear the gospel. Like if, if you could marry the science world with the revelation of the kingdom and who God is, Mm. I mean, there's so much there that already complements one another. No, just nobody goes there. Nobody talks about yep. Genesis and science. But mm -hmm. God was in his creation was the best engineer and scientist that there was. And um, so, I mean, I, I think it's awesome. Yeah. 
I love it. This is such a good um, thought. And um, this is something that's been on my heart for a while. And I, I, I'm actually writing about it in my second book, that God is the creator and we are made in God's image. So that means that we Christians should actually be the best innovators in, and, mm. and creators in the world. Come on. And and in any kinds of field and um yeah so i'm wondering also what's what's your dream now as you were you left the banking world but actually you're still doing something that's connected you're using your skill set so how do you want to impact the world you're serving um well i always say uh the call of god in your life is either a blessing or a curse if you run from hmm. it it will always be there and it'll haunt you because you will feel unfulfilled. But if you embrace it and live in it, it will bless you. And in that, there's fulfillment and joy in saying yes, yes to it. And the call isn't anything complicated or this mystery that it seems people are trying to figure out what's the call of God in my life. Um, and I hear it all the time. And that's what people, especially in ministry or even in my coaching, like, JJ, can you tell me what the call of God in my life is? And I'm like... No, but yes, the call is <laughs> no. literally that. It's it's the sound of God echoing through the ages and through time and space, and it's calling you. It's saying, David, mm. and all you have to do is say yes. And once we give the yes, it's like heaven and earth shift with you and your word of obedience. That's your yes. Then everything else works itself out. So in my life, that's the that's the place I'm at is to say, I've heard the call. I don't know what the call looks like. I don't know the mm. the how and the when, but but God figures that out. As long as I know the who, and that's him, and I know the what, and that's mm -hmm. my obedience, then the when and the how then figure themselves out through the, through the steps. So every day for me is new. I travel a lot. I'm doing life coaching, um, but I'm very specific. I'm not looking for a job. So I'm not looking for something that's going to now provide an income for me that I can go work a field. I'm just flowing. So I do everything from my life change. And in that I do seminars and I do finance and business and just lifestyle, helping people do the same thing with unlocking meaning and find, finding that, that niche of where does my obedience um, meet the call. Yeah. So, and then I travel, I do ministry wherever I'm invited, speaking or uh, I'm a musician. I love to worship. I love to play piano and sing. And that's my safe place. I love it there. And being able to mm -hmm. do that together with people around the world is just a huge passion of mine. That's awesome. That's that's so cool. But still, there's something I would like to know, JJ. And it's probably also interesting for somebody's on the fence because leaving the comfort zone is tough. It is scary. And... What I've just heard is that there's still a lot of uncertainty in, in, well, you know, the who, you know, that's, that you trust God. That's great. But how do you navigate that, this tension and actually still manage to thrive despite the unknown? I mean, I think that is the question. And I, I'm probably asking myself the question like, God, how do I navigate this now? I don't know what's next. I have no idea. And it's just, I mean, that's where religion and Religion shifts from being the practice of religion to a relationship. And if you don't have mm. that relationship with him to understand who he is to you, then it is going to mm. be a struggle to navigate because it's con continually going to fall on your works. So now, okay, what do I need to do next? How do I need to provide for myself? How am I going to get this sorted out? And it just keeps coming back to the responsibility falls on me. And so my shift has had to be like, okay, God, I don't know what to do next. So you lead me and me trusting you. That's probably the scariest part is, but that's the letting go. The, the scariest part is letting go and to say, I don't have to do it. I asked my dad um, in the beginning of this journey, I sat with my dad. I'm 38 years old and I still call my dad every day because um, he's just such a place I, I feed from for spiritual wisdom. But I said, listen, I've quit my job. I'm young, I'm quite capable of making things happen and producing with my hands, and I feel responsible to do that. So trusting God to take care of me financially, just I'm so uncomfortable with that. 
because I'm capable. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, well, as long as I can yeah. work with my hands, I should be. And I said, I'm not in full-time ministry, opening a church and on the platform, preaching and ministering. So I feel guilty to say, God, can you provide for me and pay my bills and make sure that I'm, I'm taken care of? And uh, I said, I don't deserve that because I'm not, I'm not working in that capacity. And he looked at me and he mm. says, did you deserve forgiveness? And I was like, no. He's like, well, did you deserve salvation? And I said, no, no. I said, but I know that. I know that he saves me and forgives me. And he says, but you can't believe that he provides for you? And I was like, mm. I, I do struggle with that, that part of it. And um, so that's been a lot of my journey. It's like continually coming back to the place that's uncomfortable. And the, the whole journey of navigating it is uncomfortable continually. But learning to just trust that he provides just because he loves you, not because you deserve it, not because you've earned it, just because he loves you and he makes way for you. So my obedience to that, he takes care of it. And I, I can't tell you the formula how. I don't, I, don't, hmm. I don't know what it takes. I just know that it starts with a yes. Wow, that's so powerful. That's amazing. What a testimony. Um, yeah, I can, I can relate to that because um, <laughs> it's tough actually to, to, to let go. Don't we want to sometimes just control? It doesn't it come down to controlling or think we can control. And actually, I personally realized that there's pretty much nothing I can control in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's gonna work. Uh, yeah, you, you don't know what's going on tomorrow. You have no idea. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent agree. And I, I mean, I when I find people who are in the same boat, I think I immediately gel with them to know. But also to be an encouragement to people, like, listen, if you're if you're feeling the call, but you don't know what the call looks like right now, you don't know exactly what the end of that sentence sounds like, but you've heard something, just respond to it. Just jump out of the plane and when you do that's when you'll find out why the birds sing until then mm -hmm. it's always going to be like man what what's on the other side what more is there in life what more could i be or to do but if you want to unlock the meaning you've got to take the leap and let go isn't it faith and faith is letting go and not knowing everything yep yeah, that's the whole basis yeah. of it. It's not knowing. <laughs> that's crazy. So what is the the most exciting part of your new chapter now, JJ? Like what is the thing or the things you think like, wow, this gets me up in the morning mm. and I love it? Um, well, I think when I had to wake up early in the morning to get to a job, gosh, there wasn't a day I wanted to get out of bed and I think a lot of people huh. in that red race feel the same, like, oh, another day. And I mean, I see people even put statements on uh, Instagram and or whatever. And they're like, man, it's almost the weekend. Oh, man, I don't even look forward to weekends anymore because I feel like every single day of my life is a, a weekend. And I look forward to getting up every mm. day because it's new and contrary to what you're saying about us controlling our lives. But there is an aspect of the fact like I control my schedule. I control where I go next. And I get to say yes whenever I do. I mean, there was a group of us the other day talking about like, hey, how many of you guys want to just go and meet in Switzerland next year in June? And I was easily able to be like, sure, let's do it. Um, sure, yeah. <laughs> next next year, I'm heading to South Africa. I'm in the States now, so I'm heading to South Africa end of February, and I've got a one-way ticket. So I'm going there. And oh, wow. I, don't, I, don't, I just keep buying one-way tickets, honestly, because I'm just moving and grooving with the Lord. Like, God, you tell, you tell me where to next. And to be in that place, golly, that's, that's honestly what gets me up in the morning. Like, God, it's wow, anything a, today. Anything could happen. And I'm completely free. Completely free. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. And, and I would just wonder also, is this also something, maybe a, a benefit we have as, as, let's call it seasoned singles, that we are so free and we can respond easily to the call and just like you're doing, you're buying a ticket and, and hopping on a plane and going to South Africa. Yeah, the fact <laughs> that I have nobody to answer to, I mean, I think that's probably 
what I'd love to have somebody to partner with me in life um, and to be yeah. able to say yes with me and we go together. But to be honest, I've embraced the fact that how privileged I am to be in the season I am. And that looks like singleness right now too. Mm. And learning to realize in this season, I am fully complete, fully whole as a, as a person and in the place of obedience to say 100% yes to everything in any way. Mm. And I don't have to share that responsibility with anybody. I don't have to share that accountability anywhere. Of course you have your relationships that you're accountable to, but it is a, it is a freeing season. And I have lots of friends with me, especially at my age. I mean, my best friends, my siblings are all married with kids and moving on. Their life looks completely different. And I hear it all the time, JJ, man, I wish I could just live your life. You just get up and go and you're just living your best life and you're doing all these adventures and you're meeting people and whatever. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to give that up for any one person right now. So, and I mean, I count my words carefully because in the, as, as God directs, absolutely. Yes. But it's a beautiful season to be single and free yes. and to just go and adventure and to just be. But how do you, because well, I know, I know there's so much freedom and so much possibilities as a single. And I, I cherish that as well. But there is also this part of relationship and I think we are made for relationship and we are made for, yeah, we, we need friends and we need family. And how do you still, uh, I'd say, um, get your share um, while traveling so much, while doing a lot of exciting stuff? How does this work for you? Gosh, well, not to be prideful, but I think I get more of a share than your average person who has the white picket fence and a family at home. To be honest, I meet people all over the world. And especially in the kingdom, when you meet those relationships, they they fulfill some part of you that I there's not. I don't deal with loneliness. But I mean, I had a journey through it. I had a journey through a season of loneliness and mm. figure out what it, why am I, why am I like that? Why am I not fulfilled in my person? Why am I waiting for some, somebody else or something else to complete me? And as soon as I overcame that fact and understood that I am complete, fully made in the image and likeness of God. And I have a relationship with him that completes everything. I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. And then with that, finding divine connections all over the world through through friends and through ministry and also just being fulfilled in what you're doing like in in what I'm because I'm doing what I'm called to do because I'm doing who I am I when I'm enacting who I am and not just something I'm good at but it's my I am is coming out of me in everything I do I need lack lacking nothing nothing's broken mm. nothing's missing wow and so yeah, even friends, I have amazing friends and even meeting you and the group that we're with and stuff like that. I'm just, I'm like, God, thank you. Because in any other season of my life, I wouldn't have found that. And now I, I have found it and it's added so much value to oh. me already. Yeah, that's that's such a privilege. I, I agree. Uh, the, the last couple of years have been just amazing. And, you know, I lived... Yeah, in a completely different country. Uh, I was trapped there for a certain time because of the pandemic, but I got to meet so many ex amazing people actually because of that. And that's another, well, that, that's probably another story, but that's also, uh, I left the comfort zone once again. And I <laughs> had this impression I should call an online, I should start an online hangout. And, and this is like not my thing at all. I, was obedient and now is it three years later or two and a half years later we're still okay, strong wow. strong and standing it's just crazy it's just a god thing it's yeah yeah and i just think what was my mind i mean there's no way ever that we would have really connected except for no i mean so you just think no. you're from switzerland in cambodia i'm in america traveling to south africa there were no parts crossing but um, no but so then your act of obedience, the people that are coming and surrounding you now to say, hey, you're not alone. And I think even in mm -hmm. the online hangout that we do, it's finding people that are passionate after God, but still also travelers and adventurers and 
So I'm finding my people in my obedience. Mm-hmm. So I, that's how it works. It's there's, that's a, there's no formula to it. It's just kind of you say yes to one no. thing and it unravels itself to being a fulfilled sign once again, all on its own. Yes, absolutely. So JJ, as we are wrapping up, um, what is the number one thing you would say or the number one key to live your best life? What would that be? So I say this in my courses as well with Create Your Life by Design. Um, Remember, you are a human being and not a human doing. And there's such a peace and shift when you recognize that you can just be. We live in a fast-paced, immediate gratification society um, that drive the hustle and grind mentality. And sometimes we get so lost in the busyness of life that we lose the meaning. Even in our digital environment, Mm. we are so busy capturing the moment, we never live in it. Or our media is driving narratives in our minds that we don't even think for ourselves anymore. Our opinions are brainwashed opinions. And so learning how to be comfortable in the discomfort of just being is a powerful place. So you are, therefore you do. I am, therefore I do. Not the other way around. It's not I do and that's where I find my meaning. No, it's who I am. And now... By finding that, I now do. Wow, that's amazing. That's such a great conclusion of our wonderful uh, conversation. So, JJ, where can people find you? Well, if it was a physical location, I'd be like, I don't know if you can find me because I don't even know where I'm going to be. So thank goodness for uh, social media and online being able to find somebody. But I am on all platforms of social media. It's JJ Fulyun. If you're looking for me on Facebook or Instagram, Um, I do have a website for my life change life coaching. It's www.iamlifechange.com. And those are the best ways to kind of get in touch and find me and follow where in the world I might be. That's awesome. Thank you so much, JJ, for being on the show and sharing your insights. It was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. I loved it.